When I first show IFR students an instrument approach plate, I'll start out with something relatively basic, like the ILS approach into Farmingdale on Long Island. Let's break the approach plate into its components, just the way it's done on our Flight Insight IFR Online Ground School, which you can check out in the link here or in the description. First and foremost, we have the approach name. This is the ILS OR localizer to runway 14 at Republic, Farmingdale, New York. The OR means that we use this plate whether we're flying the precision ILS approach or the non-precision localizer approach. More on this later. Next, we have some approach and runway information. The localizer frequency is received on 111.9. That's in your nav unit, same place you tune a VOR frequency. Next is our approach course, 146. This is usually aligned with the runway center line, especially on a precision approach like this ILS, but not all approaches line up like this. Then we have runway landing distance, touchdown zone elevation, and airport elevation. Notice the elevation at the runway touchdown point and the official airport elevation aren't always the same. They're measured at different points on the airfield. Our minimum altitudes are gonna be based on the height above that touchdown zone. Next is the notes section. This can be pretty lengthy, but here we see that an autopilot coupled approach is not allowed below 550 MSL and that the inoperative equipment table, which is found in the terminal procedures publication, doesn't apply for the ILS. You also have these two black triangles facing opposite ways, saying T, which means there are non-standard takeoff minimums for the runway, and A, which means the requirement to use this airport and approach in your alternate planning on the IFR flight plan are non-standard. In both cases, consult the airport page in the TPP. After that is the missed approach procedure. Here, it's described in textual format, but as we'll see later, there's also a graphical display below. Below that is the frequency bar. You can generally move left to right as the flight progresses through the approach and landing, from ATIS and New York approach through tower, ground, and unicom. The circle diagram in the plan view shows the minimum safe altitudes, reckoned in a 25 mile radius from the Frick NDB, showing minimum altitudes in case of emergency. They should be part of your brief, but we won't plan to actually fly them unless we're out of contact with ATC or have some other type of emergency. Okay, let's get into the real meat and potatoes of the approach plate. Here, we're looking at what's called the plan view, looking at the approach from the top down. We see three rectangular boxes, one with the localizer that we saw earlier, then there's the Deer Park VOR, and Frick NDB. Frick says LOM, which stands for Locator Outer Marker, which is a bit of an outdated but still useful transmitter that equipped aircraft will be able to detect when overflying it. It also says IAF, Initial Approach Fix. This is where the approach begins from. There are sometimes multiple IAFs, but here there's only one. We can be approaching Frick, the Initial Approach Fix, from any direction, especially if we're navigating by GPS. We could also be approaching from the Deer Park VOR on what's called a feeder route, that 276 course from the VOR to Frick. The racetrack pattern at Frick is called a hold in lieu of procedure turn. It's a course reversal that'll allow us to get turned around and at the proper altitude prior to starting down on final approach. You might notice another racetrack pattern at Deer Park. That one's a dashed line rather than solid. So rather than being a course reversal, it's actually a missed approach holding pattern, which we'll explore in a bit. For now, let's have a closer look at the course reversal, and we'll bring in the profile view, which looks at the approach from the side, as well as the minimum section. We're gonna be approaching Frick from an initial altitude, typically one that's assigned by ATC. What we see in the two bars is the course reversal altitude. As long as we're in the course reversal, we should be between 1600 and 6000 feet. Preferably, we'll aim to be at 1600 as we're still completing the procedure turn because we'll need to go down lower. Once we're established on the final approach course, we can go down to 1400 feet. Now, this is where we can make a distinction between the ILS and localizer only approach. On the ILS, 1400 feet is the glide slope intercept altitude as shown by the lightning bolt symbol. We'll stay at 1400 feet until intercepting the glide slope, then begin a descent to the decision altitude of 338 feet. The localizer only approach, as well as the circling approach, work a bit differently. We'll hold 1400 again, but this time we'll begin a descent when passing Frick using either our ADF, marker beacon, or GPS to identify it, 
and we'll go down to the minimum descent altitude. For a category A or B aircraft, this will be 560 feet MSL for the localizer approach, and if we're circling to land, the MDA will be 640 or 720. The other figures on the plate are the required flight visibility to go below minimums, three-fourths of a mile for the ILS and LOC, and one full statute mile for the circling for CATS A and B. On the localizer approach, the missed approach point is the runway threshold, which you can identify using GPS. Or, if you don't have it, you can time it using the chart provided. An aircraft doing the approach at 90 knots ground speed will start timing from crossing the final approach fix at Frick, and after 2 minutes and 36 seconds, go missed. So what's the missed approach procedure? We saw it written in text form, but it's also shown in sequential graphical form in the profile view. We first climb straight ahead to 800, and then continue the turn in a climb to 3,000 feet, going direct to the Deer Park VOR, where we'll hold. We can either do a parallel or teardrop entry at the VOR, depending on our preference and what our initial heading is. So those are the components of an instrument approach plate. There's so many more components on other approaches to explore, so if you're just getting into instrument flying, or you need a refresher after a break, Check out our full Flight Insight ground schools today and join 10,000 other fellow pilots becoming smarter every day.